Hi everybody, it's Stephanie. This week I am making my very first console, an NES, into a cake. Tell me in the comments what your first video game console was. All right, let's get started. Let's begin by decorating the board. So I have three shades of brown fondant with Tylos mixed into it, and I'm going to press the three colors together into one log shape. I'm sprinkling a little cornstarch onto my surface and then I'm rolling it out into a thinner log and then I begin twisting the fondant and then I fold it in half. And you just keep doing the same thing over and over to get that beautiful wood grain effect. Decorating the board is an optional step and it will cost you more money because you have to buy more fondant. But I think it is completely worth it because the end product is going to look more professional and also more realistic. The three colors look nicely blended, so I'm going to roll out the fondant into a large rectangle, and then really quick I'm brushing my board with piping gel, and then I transfer the fondant onto the board. It's not quite big enough, but we're going to make it work by rolling it out a little more after it's on the board. Trim the edges of the fondant to be nice and clean on the edges, and then take a tool like this to make the boards in the fondant. And then go back and use a dressin tool and just scratch it all up. You don't want this to be perfect. One more thing, I'm airbrushing black in all the scratches and cracks that I just made, and this will bring out those a little bit more. And then let this dry out overnight. Let's move on to the cake. I baked two 11 inch square cakes. One of them is a little shorter than the other, which worked out perfectly. The taller cake needs to be leveled by cutting the dome off the top, and then I torted it by running my knife through the center. And the second shorter cake just needs the dome cut off the top. If you feel that you need a template to make this cake, and I do like every single time, just get onto the internet and do a search for NES dimensions and a whole bunch of things are gonna pop up for you. I stacked up all three of my cakes and I'm trimming off about an inch and a half of the cake in the back. And then I trimmed off just a tiny bit more. We're going to need a cardboard cake board that has been cut just a little smaller than the cake. And then I started to layer up my cakes and frosting. This frosting is so good. It's peanut butter buttercream and you can find the recipe in the description box. I almost forgot the peanut butter cups. These are my husband's favorite, so I don't want to forget. So I'm just roughly chopping up the peanut butter cups and then I'm gonna sprinkle those all over the buttercream frosting. And then continue stacking up the other layers of cake, frosting, and peanut butter cups. The NES is about three and a half inches tall, so keep that in mind. I felt like this was a tad bit too tall, so I'm cutting some cake off the top. Now that my cake is filled with buttercream, I'm going to cover it completely in chocolate ganache. You can use buttercream frosting for covering the entire outside of the cake, but I like using chocolate ganache because I feel that it makes a nice hard shell around the cake and makes it easier to work with later on. And my recipe for chocolate ganache is two parts of chocolate to one part heavy cream. My cake is covered in ganache and then I remembered that I need to carve the sides of the cake a little bit more. So I trimmed in the sides just a little bit at an angle. And then I covered it in another layer of chocolate ganache. And this is where you'll want to spend some time trying to perfect the shape and smoothing out the ganache. You can use an icing scraper or a spatula dipped in hot water to smooth it out and get those really sharp corners. The next step is covering the cake in modeling chocolate. I am using the paneling method here. So first you roll out the modeling chocolate and then you place it on top of the cake. And then I place my ruler right under that top edge and then I run my razor blade right across the top edge. And that's how you get that really sharp edge. I usually do it a couple times to make sure it's nice and clean. And then I repeat that for all of the sides on the top. If you do not like using modeling chocolate or you don't have any, you can also use fondant. For me though, I personally like the taste of modeling chocolate more than fondant. And I also think that you can get a really sharp cut with modeling chocolate more so than with fondant. While I'm working on the top, I'm gonna go ahead and etch the lines that are on the real NES onto the top of the cake. This is where you're going to want to get your template out. So just hold that paper up to the cake and then grab your dressing tool or a modeling tool and then trace the design onto the cake. And then when you pull the paper off, you're going to lightly see that design on the cake. 
The bottom section of the NES is a darker gray, so I'm cutting strips of modeling chocolate and I'm using the same paneling method. And go ahead and do this to cover the entire cake. Okay, so get the template back out and trace the remaining lines and details onto the sides of the cake. Using the guide that we just drew, I'm cutting away a strip of the gray chocolate so that later I can add a black strip of chocolate right there. And then use a ruler and dressing tool again to make the lines deeper and more visible. Let's fill in that gap I just cut away with a black strip of modeling chocolate. And after I do that, I'm adding a few more line details to the black strip. So you can leave the details as is, but I decided to add a few more details like these little rectangular buttons. For the controllers, I did not want to make these completely out of modeling chocolate because I think it will taste better with a Rice Krispie Treat center. So I have cut out rectangles of Rice Krispie Treats and then I completely covered that in modeling chocolate. All of these details for the controllers were cut out of modeling chocolate, and then I added those to the controllers. I could have continued on by painting the lettering on the controllers, but I was happy as they were. And also I didn't want to mess up the Nintendo logo, so I printed it out on edible paper, and then you can stick that on with some shortening. Let's put it all together. So I am attaching the cake onto the board with melted candy melts. And the last final details are the ports on the front of the NES and the black modeling chocolate cords. I also did a little painting on the front, which I think turned out only okay. I was definitely starting to get tired at the end. My NES cake is complete. I had so much fun making this cake. It was pretty easy to make, except for some of the details, I would say they took a little bit longer than I had expected, but overall, I'm really happy with the cake. Thank you all for watching, and if you guys have any ideas for me, please let me know down in the comment section. All right, I'll see everybody later. Bye.